dead, Peter Quill. Hey everyone, Chris here with Platinum Reviews. Today I have the newest Platinum Review for Guardians of the Galaxy on PlayStation 5. Now, if you're not familiar with my reviews, it is where I Platinum a game, I get all the trophies, and then I review it. That way it's a full review and not some half ass review. So, let's uh, jump right into the review. Guardians of the Galaxy turned out to be a surprise for me. The game was announced at E3 2021, uh, which is held in June, with an October release date. So, it came out of nowhere. Immediately, I knew I wanted to play the game. It was announced by Square Enix with Indios Montreal working on the game. Those are the same devs that worked on Dos X, Avengers, and Tomb Raider. So I had high hopes for this game. Now I know what you're thinking. High hopes and Avengers in the same sentence? I'm one of those weirdos that liked Avengers, even with its issues. But that brought me to one of those questions going into this game. Would it suffer from the same issues? Well, let's start with the story. Other superhero games, you have these amazing stories where you get lost in the game and its environment. From Injustice to the Arkham series, comic book games are known for having these brilliant narratives that keep you engulfed from start to finish, except for Superman 64. Guardians of the Galaxy is no different. You start your journey with the Guardians after the team has been formed for a while, without getting too into detail with the story because I don't like to spoil anything, especially with this story. You play a Star-Lord with the help of Rocket, Groot, Gamora, and Drax. It is your job to save the galaxy. Whew, almost gave away too much there. Just kidding. But the game story from start to finish is amongst the greats when it comes to comic book video games. This amazing narrative is something that you need to play for yourselves. Probably my favorite aspect of the story is the playful banter between characters. While these short conversations drive the story forward, it also gives short glimpses into these characters' backgrounds and their personalities, while also poking fun at one another. In true Guardians of the Galaxy fashion, you can have Rocket try to tell you, go a certain way because he thinks the other is a dead end. When you do check out that supposed dead end, Rocket will make fun of you. You also have these choices that will help you gain or lose trust with characters you meet along the way. Now, this doesn't really affect too much of story-related content, which I feel like would have made the game benefit. Mass Effect 2 is my favorite game of all time, and one of the reasons are that the choices in the game have drastic effects on how the game plays out. So I feel like having that component in this game would have only made it a stronger game. Overall, though, I loved the story. I thought it flowed beautifully from start to finish, minus a few slow points. I would recommend the game just from story alone. Gameplay has you playing as Star-Lord. You are unable to control the other characters or command them in battle, minus using their specials. Star-Lord has a number of different moves that are unlocked as you play the game. I think they balance the unlocking of abilities really well. Just when the moveset would start to get comfortable, they would add a new ability or special into the mix, as well as the decent amount of skills that you unlock via the skill tree or upgrading your abilities via Rocket's workbench. Combat is fast paced and sees you flying around the fights, shooting enemies or rolling out of the way of a charging enemy and using Rocket's ability to have him shoot the enemy with everything in his arsenal. I had a blast playing through the game. Minus a few glitches, the gameplay is solid. I have seen a few people say that Guardians of the Galaxy was game of the year for them. Now, I think it is a great game. With this many glitches though, I can't consider it to be game of the year, and I don't understand how people considered it to be their game of the year. They have fixed some of the issues that plagued the game at launch, but I had objects clipped to Star-Lord, and then Star-Lord was unable to go through a door because this object was clipped to him. Star-Lord acting like he was falling off a ledge during a fight so I couldn't attack. Game crashes galore. There was even this fun glitch where you try to walk across a ledge where a costume was for Star-Lord just to turn her back around and say, nah, 
I don't want it. The game then decided to go completely black and start controlling itself through the menus. I had to force close the game so many times. There were just so many glitches. I could not say this was even close to being game of the year. In a game with in a year with games like Neo the World Ends with You, Resident Evil Village, It Takes Two, and my game of the year, Tales of Arise, I can't even give this a nomination. Another high point of the game is the music. It was expected when they announced this game that the music would be god tier, and they did not disappoint. I know a few people were upset that they didn't have some of the bass songs from the actual movies, but I'm okay with it. I feel like it separated the movies from the game, so I have no issues with it. But from holding out for a hero to don't worry, be happy, tainted love, the soundtrack is filled with hit after hit. They even created an 80s rock album for a made-up band called Star-Lord that fits perfectly in and felt like it could be a real rock album from the 80s. The last high point of the game that I want to touch base on really quick is graphics. The game looks beautiful, like a prom date that I never had growing up. Just gorgeous. Every character model looks fantastic. Every level design just leaves you saying, well, that's pretty. Even tiny areas like the living quarters on the ship have so much detail put into them, you can really see the amount of work that the devs put into this game just on graphics alone. Guardians of the Galaxy is a rock opera in space. I have been waiting the whole review just to say that, but from its amazing story, rocking soundtrack, and fun gameplay, the only thing that's really holding it back from being a legendary game is its numerous glitches and a failed relationship system that could have been something special. As I said, with Mass Effect 2, having those choices make such a dynamic change in the story, I think this game would have really benefited from that. I would give Guardians of the Galaxy an 8 out of 10. As far as the Platinum goes, I would give it a 3 out of 10. The only missable trophy is a collectible related one. All levels are replayable through chapter select. Costumes can be collected this way. Collectibles cannot, uh, unless it's been patched since then. But if you're watching a guide for collectibles, it's not too bad to collect them all. Thank you everyone for watching this review for Guardians of the Galaxy on PlayStation 5. If you like the content, be sure to like the video. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Santa Claus is watching, and uh, he knows if you've been nice and if you're subscribed. So uh, make Santa happy. I'll catch you guys on the next Platinum Review.